Hi, I'm Melody. And I'm Candy. And you're listening to Quirks, Bumps, and Bruises. Well, we thought on this episode of Quirks, Bumps, and Bruises, we would talk about something, Candy, that is probably in every other break that we do on the morning show at Joy FM. Food? Food. Yeah, every other or every one. Well... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So we know the holidays are coming up and in particular Thanksgiving is honestly right around the corner, right? Less than a month. Because we are now into November. Yeah. And so we've got Thanksgiving coming up very quickly. So I cook a lot for mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. Yeah. And so we we thought, you know, it'd be fun to do some recipes that go over really well at our Thanksgiving lunches or dinners, whichever you do at your house. Yeah. Now The reason this got brought up to me is just this past weekend, I pulled up a Word document. I literally have a Word document for Thanksgiving. Like filled with food and all stuff, like the recipes? Like everything laid out that we will have on Thanksgiving. We do a Thanksgiving lunch at about one o'clock. Yeah. Now, let me preface that by saying up until about seven years ago, maybe. My mom always did Thanksgiving, and she would not let us help do anything. Oh, my word. And she had a spread on that table. I mean, it was everything. But she wanted to do it, and she would always say to us, it's like my gift to you all for Thanksgiving. But she would almost, and one time did, I shouldn't tell this about her. She's passed on now. She's with Jesus but she was so tired, and this was maybe about seven or eight years ago, maybe one of her last times that she did it. She was so tired that I looked over during dessert, and she was had her hands like cupped underneath her chin, and she was asleep. Oh, my word. That's how tired she was. So I said, Mom, no more. No. We have, it's ridiculous. Right. We are going to help you do it. So That's we did for the to. next couple of years. Yeah. Until she passed away, obviously, and then I became I inherited having to do Thanksgiving, which I don't mind. Do you I love let it. people bring stuff though? I, I'm like, what are you bringing? Right, you're coming. You're bringing. I'm not. Something. No, I'm not going to be the martyr like my mom was. <laughs> no. I do a lot of it because it's at my house. Yeah, but no, you're going to bring some. Participation gonna, is the key. Yes, and so we thought we would tell you a few fun recipes that you may want to try with your family. That's hits. With us. Yeah. And I thought I'd start with an appetizer. Okay. If you want to do it like a little appetizer, if you're having everybody over, you know the cheese balls. You can make your own cheese ball Mm -hmm. or you can go and you can buy those. Yeah. Already done. Mm -hmm. Put that cheese ball on a plate. Take pretzels Mm -hmm. and make little turkey, like the little legs of a turkey with pretzels. I can see the picture and it's adorable. Yes. And then you can take a bagel chip Mm -hmm. and put it on top of the cheese ball. Now, this is looking down onto a plate, right? You can make uh, the bagel chip, and then you can take whatever to make the face Mm -hmm. uh, on the turkey. And you can Google a picture of this. What would you call Mm -hmm. it? Like a Uh, cheese ball appetizer turkey? uh, Turkey cheese ball appetizer. Okay. But the feathers of the turkey Mm -hmm. is alternating pepperoni. And then different kinds of cheeses, pepperoni, then different kinds of cheeses, pepperoni. And it's on the plate. And if you've got a lot of kids, they will love that. Oh, yeah. They will love that. So that's just a cute little something you can think about doing for an appetizer. Now, Candy, do you have like a a good side dish that you do? I have several that I do and that we love. Um, You got to have like the broccoli and cheese casserole, Mm -hmm. things like that. But... Something that I'm going to try this year, and it's funny because I just made them last night for the first time. I saw a recipe for it. I thought, man, those sound really good. I made them. I think they're wonderful, and I want you to try them. And I think they would be wonderful for Christmas or Thanksgiving, anything, and they're the easiest thing in the world. Hmm. You take some apples, you just peel them, slice them into just little slices, you don't want any of the peeling on it because, you know, that's the healthy, not good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you set those to the side. I took about six to seven different apples. And then I had a pot on the stove. Do you know the red hot candies? Oh, that I love buy? those. The little bitties. Oh, I love those. Me too. Mm-hmm. You take those, a whole little box of those. You take some sugar and some water and you boil that together. So mm. you boil that little concoction together. And then once you've done that and all the candies have melted, you put your apples into that. 
and just let them saute and soak that juice up. Mm. So that when you're done, you turn it off, let it cool, and then you put it in your bowl and you pour the juice back on top of it. So the apples become red. So they're pretty. So to me, Christmas, I'm going to start doing those at Christmas. Uh-huh. But they they can work for Thanksgiving, too. Oh, yeah. But yeah. yeah, they're so good. And they're just, they look like you spent a lot of time on them. And, mm-hmm. and it was no time at no all. No time at all. That's no. the kind of recipes I love. Me, too. Speaking of apples, one of the uh, big hits that I do, and you, th- I think you know this particular recipe, Candy, is my cranberry apple crisp. Yes. And it's so easy. So uh, good. It's just three cups of chopped apples. Just chop up some apples. Two cups of cranberries. You can buy those in the bags at the grocery store. Mm-hmm. A cup of sugar and then about three tablespoons of flour. And so the first thing you're going to do is just combine all that. Mm-hmm. The apples, the cranberries, the flour, and the sugar. Just combine it. Pour it into a baking dish. I would definitely grease that baking dish first. And then on top of that, about a cup and a half of cooking oats. Mm-hmm. You know, oatmeal. Oh, yeah. Another half cup of flour, a half a cup of packed brown sugar, and then a half a cup of butter. Stir all that up. Hey, that's healthy if it's got oatmeal in it. <laughs> and apples. We won't talk about all the sugar. but um, <laughs> And then you're going to just cover the apple mixture mm-hmm. with that crumbly topping. And then you just put it in the oven about 350. It needs to bake about 55 minutes because those apples have to get kind of soft. Tender, yeah. And uh, it is delicious. Mm -hmm. It's just enough tart and sweet. And then that crumbly topping, delicious. I'm sure that goes so good with turkey or ham. It does. It is is an absolute perfect Thanksgiving dish. And it's also absolutely perfect to take to a church potluck. Mm -hmm. If your church does like a Thanksgiving, like ours does, we do a, a Thanksgiving dinner together like the Sunday night before Thanksgiving. And so a uh, great, great dish to take like that. Another one uh, involves corn. If you loved cream corn and you want something that is absolutely so delicious, take your crock pot. Now, this is what you're going to do, y'all. This is this is like just throw it all in this crock pot kind of recipe. That is my kind of food. You are going to put about 32 ounces of frozen corn. You can buy that just in a bag or whatever. Just dump mm-hmm. it in the crock pot. Then you're going to put a whole block of cream cheese in there. So you already know this is good. Mm. Because if it's got cream cheese, it's it's good. good. Then a third cup of heavy cream, a fourth cup of butter, two tablespoons of sugar. Oh, my word. Put a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of salt. Okay. Put all that together. Stir it up as much as you can. And then put your crock pot on low. Oh, at least an hour or two. And that cheese, that cream cheese is going to melt into all that corn and butter. And I'm telling y'all, I could eat, I think I could eat a whole thing of that sitting down. It is absolutely delicious and it's so easy. And that is a staple at our Thanksgiving table. Wow. Always. I love a crock pot dish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, I'm telling you, it's delicious and it's easy. Let's talk turkey. (laughs) Yeah. Now, Candy, what do you do for turkey? Do you go buy a turkey that's already cooked for you? Do you do it yourself? Like, what do you do? We do do it ourselves. We, you know, put it in the oven for a while, obviously. Do you do that? Yeah. I mean, I have not done it every single year, but yeah, I I think I did it last year. You put your hand in that turkey and pull out all that mess? Um, (laughs) yes. And I am not a fan of that. If, If I could buy, honestly, I have thought about buying buying it already done, like mm-hmm. going to the, those places that already mm-hmm. have it done. To me, that little bit of extra money would be worth it for that. Yeah. Some things are just worth paying they for. Are. Now, I used to, before my daughter married my son-in-law, who should be a chef, what? before she married him, I just ordered a turkey already cooked from the yeah. grocery store. I know that you might find, you may find that shocking about me. But I that's do. one thing I don't do is to turkey. I'm yeah. going to let somebody else do that. But now my son-in-law... He loves to try everything. So he does, he has a fryer, like a turkey fryer. So he does a deep fat fried turkey. Oh, my soul. And I will tell you, that is the best turkey that I've ever had because it is so moist. Well, I was just going to ask. I feel like it would be dried out. It's not. It's it's got that nice crisp on the outside skin and then just so good. So he's the turkey maker from here on out. Oh, yeah. I've already told him. I will buy the turkey. Yeah. 
and you it takes a lot of oil too. Mm-hmm. So I said I'll buy the turkey and the oil if you'll just do it. Yeah. And cut it up and bring it. Right. And so he goes ahead and cuts it up as on a platter. We don't. Oh, that's wonderful. You know. So that's how we do turkey at our house. Now let's move to dessert because we've got an appetizer. We've that's got right. a couple of sides for you. We've talked about the turkey. Oh, I almost forgot before we move on. Chicken and dumplings is a staple at my house. Do you have chicken and dumplings with the turkey? I do. Good. And I don't know why other than my mother did that my whole life. We always had chicken and dumplings. And you can go buy frozen dumplings now, mm-hmm. but I don't do that. I hand roll out real dumplings. And I here's the trick for me. I do it about two weeks or more before Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. and I put those in the freezer. Okay. So you can freeze those. Yeah. Uh, you make them and you put them in the freezer for a couple of hours and you pull them back out and then you can stack them up in some foil and put them back in the freezer. Yeah. So on Thanksgiving Day, they're ready to go. That's you wonderful. don't have to thaw them. You just yeah. drop them in the hot broth. Yeah. I use Ann's dumplings. And they're delicious. They but are. they are. You need to be getting them now because they be are out. so hard to find. They are. As you get closer to mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. But they are good. I, yeah. Honestly. I will be honest with you and tell you, I don't know that you can really tell much difference between mm-hmm. my homemade ones and those, Yeah, but it's just something traditional, yeah. you know. So we do have those chicken and dumplings. Now, here's the cute thing. My dad, he will be 94 in December, and his participation for Thanksgiving is this. I buy a big chicken, whole chicken. He cooks that for me and pulls all the chicken off of it for the dumplings. Oh. Yep. And he puts the broth in something that we can freeze until we use it for Thanksgiving. Oh, my soul. So that's his, because he said, I can sit and do that. You that's know, awesome. I can he didn't sit. have to cook. He does, mm-hmm. does he? You said he cooks it he too? He cooks it too. He cooks the chicken and he pulls all the meat off of the chicken. And then he puts the broth in a big container that he puts in the freezer. And he puts the chicken in the freezer. Well, that's a huge contribution. It, I cannot even tell you how much time that saves me. No kidding. I haven't talked. I need to talk to him about that because I hadn't kind of mentioned that yeah. to him lately. So I need to do that. So chicken and dumplings and turkey at my house. Now, so we've talked about an appetizer. We've talked about a couple of sides. We've talked about the meats. So what do we got now, Candy? Dessert. Let's talk on some dessert. And now, I love that you're still on this Word document. <laughs> Oh, you know, we didn't finish kind of talking about that Word document, but what I do is lay out everything I'm bringing, everything my daughter and son-in-law are bringing, everything that my son and his wife are bringing, and it's color-coded. Of course it is. I have to keep it organized, otherwise I don't know who's doing what. That is hilarious. And I keep them accountable that way, too. <laughs> like, where are the roles? Right? Who forgot the roles? You Let's know, that kind of thing. Look. But um, and make them feel very guilty about yes, that. Absolutely, it's the holidays because <laughs> you got to have rolls because right. you got to take those rolls and make some leftover turkey, little turkey mm-hmm. sandwiches with that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, back to dessert. The most important part. What does your family do? Sweet potato pie, pumpkin pie. What do you do? You know, we do more like we've done banana pudding and things like that, but we do the pumpkin pie. My mother-in-law does that a lot. You know, Mm -hmm. it's funny because her mother, my husband was just talking about this. My mother-in-law's mother used to like have the pumpkin. She would grow her own pumpkins, scoop all that mess out, do all that, make it with real stuff. Mm -hmm. Now we use the can. My mother-in-law uses the can pumpkin, which I can't tell the difference. You cannot. Yeah, but you got to have some, you got to have a sweet potato or pumpkin pie, but I am a pumpkin. Pie fan, mm-hmm. more so than I am sweet potato. I agree. Mm-hmm. My best friend's mother used to win the pumpkin pie contest at the fair every oh, year. Oh, my word. And so she, when I got married, she passed, she was just a fabulous cook. And so her wedding gift to me was a recipe book with all of her recipes in it. Oh, my Still goodness. Still have it to this day. And in that book was her recipe for her award-winning pumpkin pie. Is that what you make? Well, for all the years since I got married up until Lindsay got married, it was a tradition to make that pumpkin pie. Lindsay has now taken that on. So I don't have to do it anymore. Whoa. Yeah. Is this a difficult pumpkin pie to make? It's not difficult, no. Do you and use canned now, pumpkin? She, well, in her, she used a real pumpkin. So back in maybe my first year of marriage, which was almost 40 years ago, I did it with a real pumpkin, and I said to myself, self, 
you will never do that again because you can go to the store and buy a can that tastes exact the same. Yes. And it's just so much tr- that pumpkin doing that pumpkin. I there no. could be some listeners like, no, you've got to use a real. Well, you just go right ahead. Yeah, that's I'm not going, me. No, uh, I will tell you that some of her. I don't know if it's secret ingredients for everybody that makes pumpkin pie, but she has a little bit of orange juice in her mixture. Hmm. And her grandfather was a beekeeper. Honey. And so there's honey for sure mm-hmm. in the pumpkin pie, her pumpkin pie recipe. But she won blue ribbons every year at the fair in our area for that. For that. Wow. And, um, so we, Lindsay does that now. That's another thing off of me. I don't have to do that. But I, we always have to have my mom's pound cake. Mm. My mother was known for her pound cake. Who makes that? I do that. Yeah. I do that one. I think we covered it all, didn't we? I think so. And now I'm hungry. I, well, did you say that you brought some of those apples with the red hot? There you go. Well, you're right. There we go. Thanks for listening to the Quirks, Bumps, and Bruises podcast with Candy and Melody. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast. You can learn more at joyfm.org.